I have a bone to pick with the Peloton Corporation. Previously, on scenic rides, they had one Vancouver ride. It was a 10 minute long ride. I said that's insulting. This is, I don't want to say it's a world-class cycling city, but it's a good cycling city. We deserve at least a 30-minute ride. You could easily do a 60-minute ride without even having to stretch for good routes, okay? You got the Central Valley Greenway, you got the Arbutus Greenway, you got the Seawall, et cetera, et cetera. So imagine my surprise today when I go to scenic rides, there's a 20-minute Vancouver ride. I start with a 60-minute ride in Montenegro. It was beautiful. No disrespect. Added the 20 minute Vancouver ride at the end. What's the name of the ride? 20 minute English Bay Seawall Ride. Imagine my surprise. You start on the northeast portion of Stanley Park. Beautiful. The trees, the water, the Lionsgate Bridge. You go around the Lionsgate Bridge on the north side, come down the west side which takes you to English Bay, and then they freaking cut through a park, and there's like three seconds of English Bay on the English Bay ride. Before you know, they do a, a Dune Messiah time skip, and they're at Cooper's Park, which last time I checked was in freaking Yale Town, and then they go all around, yeah, they're at like the Canby Bridge, they go all around the Science World, they go around the like, a, a, a Olympic Village and just keep going like the whole thing is 20 it's 20 minute English Bay ride they're in English Bay for three seconds they named the ride wrong they should call it 20 minute seawall Vancouver ride if I'm advertised an English Bay ride I want to see cargo ships I want to see beaches I want to see people roller skating and playing volleyball on the beach I got nothing against Yale Town it's a perfectly nice neighborhood, a great place to get brunch. If you're going to call it English Bay, you know, don't skip straight from Prospect Point to Cooper's Park. I just got a Gatorade water commercial. Gatorade. Oh, is it in you? I still can't believe Germa's McDonald's order has a Powerade in it. That seems crazy to me, man. That's based? It's not not based. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just like... I don't know. Listen, everybody's got a preference. I personally think um, Coke clears Pepsi easy. I think Sprite clears 7-Up easy. When it comes to Mug versus Barks, I'm a, I'm a Barks guy. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily loyal to any corporation because some of those are Coke products and some of those are Pepsi products. But what I will say without a doubt is like Gatorade feels like you're drinking the correct formula and Powerade feels like like a, an ex executive at Gatorade stole the recipe but then like dropped it in a puddle and two very important ingredients got changed like it it tastes like a, like a Xerox Gatorade like it has a similar flavor profile but it just lacks like the original spirit or something like it's a ghost in the damn shell Imagine my surprise yesterday, by the way, when I made it to Chibli's stream a few hours after its start. Does anybody remember what did Chibli asked me what he should play on his stream? What was the one thing I said? Not Stardew. Exactly. Not Stardew. Now, let me just say he can do whatever he wants to do with his stream. Okay. I go to his stream. It's been on for two hours. He's playing Stardew. Strike number one. Strike two, he had already done his name 100 women challenge. I missed it. Stardew is good, you're just a hater. Wow, what a strange opinion. Stardew Valley good? This is the first time hearing about it. I didn't say Stardew's boring. I'm sure when you're playing it, you're like that gif of the dude playing the rhythm game with his hair and he's getting like increasingly sweaty. Because you're like, oh my god, I only have four in-game hours left to bring an Easter egg to Pam on the Easter festival, otherwise she'll never fucking talk to me ever again. And it turns out four hours in game is actually like four seconds IRL. So you got to get on that shit. It's better than climbing. Last time I checked, farming is in, in the Olympics, bitch. Neither is poker. Yeah, because fucking Jamie Gold would just win all the time. Ever since Greg Raymer and Chris Moneymaker retired. Hold. How do you know Jamie Gold? Because I was alive in 2007 when... 
like 99% of programming on all sports channels was competitive poker. Poker before dark, poker after dark, poker before sunrise, poker before sunset. Everybody wants some poker. Boyhood, but it's about poker. I don't know how it turned into a Richard Linklater joke, but I'm not anti-poker, by the way. I'm, I don't necessarily love playing it myself, but I think it's kind of cool. It just sort of like the poker boom oversaturated it, and we're still living in the era today, I feel. What the hell do you think Balatro is? A different game using poker-based mechanics? Like, your ass is not in a high school where you're an eligible bachelor, and then there's like 10 ladies vying for your attention, but you still play visual novels, and yet you don't extend the same courtesy to me? It hardly seems fair. <laughs> cod, 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 cod. It's time to transition to World of Warcraft. Mm, maybe when the OTK offer comes in. I think I might have missed my window on World of Warcraft, considering it came out almost 21 motherfucking years ago. And everyone that got addicted to it in the mid-2000s is either dead or like uh, the CTO of some kind of billion dollar company now. My coworker has lost, lost his job to that game. I don't mean this even in a negative way. Like I don't think the companies are responsible for this, but it is kind of crazy to think about like how many people have had the trajectories of their lives changed by World of Warcraft or League of Legends. I'm not putting anybody on blast, you know? If you could go back in time, there's probably a lot of decisions you would make a little bit differently. But do you ever think about like how many people like dropped out of college because they got addicted to League of Legends or something like that? That's crazy. Or Dota 2. Well, let's not make any enemies, you know? <laughs> At least like I kind of get it um, for League. Like it's an addictive game. But like there's probably even sadder games that people have like altered the course of their lives for, right? Like, any motherfucker out there ever get addicted to... I mean, I would feel so bad if, like, someone watched my Isaac videos and then got addicted to The Binding of Isaac and flunked out of college playing Rebirth. That shit would be depressing, bro. That's a single-player game, man. You could just play it after you graduate. <laughs> I get that's not how, like, the human mind works, but... Space Cadet Pinball? Getting a D minus in like the most important course in your major because you're addicted to playing like fucking Minesweeper or shit like that. Wait, you did that? Um, I probably took uh, a couple of decimal points off my GPA in my uh, senior year of university because I was playing a lot of Civ 4. I'll give you that. But the only, I'm not going to say anything in my defense. Like if I could go back in time, I would be more academically minded in college for sure. But uh, I think I had already resigned myself at that point to the fact that that biology degree was basically going to be next to worthless. Now, I should have been doing something better than playing Civ 4, to be honest. But like, that's how the mind of like a 20 year old works, right? Civ 4 stream when? The, the worst part about it is not going to happen because I was still ass at Civilization 4. <laughs> Like, I just played a lot of it. I never really got... That was how it worked if you were a gamer, like, 20 years ago. You didn't, like, go plat in Civ 4. Most people didn't, at least. You would just, like, play a lot of a game because it was fun, you know? You wouldn't necessarily try to delude yourself into thinking you were doing something productive by, like, making progress. You would just play, you know, the same way, like, kids on the school ground play. It was different back then. Once but never again. There's a left message, so my little brother. Song I, I really should know the words to, considering I've probably heard it 500 times. Choo choo train left right on time. Dicka dicka doon, dicka dicka. I know what you're saying. You see the interview with Rivers Cuomo where he said um, he wrote Say It Ain't So about his alcoholic stepdad? because he saw a photo of his stepdad smoking a cigarette and holding a beer. And then like after the song became mega popular, he talked to his mom and his mom was like, oh yeah, he was actually sober. He didn't smoke or drink. We were just goofing off for a picture. 
Bro, bro really got that tight over a single beer? I know, not even like it's just a photo of, of his dad holding a beer, like, or his stepdad holding a beer. It was a little dramatic. I mean, it all worked out, I guess, but... Bro literally saw one beer in the fridge. I've just got to be honest with you, brother. If one hiney is crowding your icebox, you got to clean your fucking fridge. Shit is 330 milliliters or something. Like, it should be able to fit. There's even a spot on the fridge, like, and in the drawers, or the door, I should say, where bottles can go. You got to get some of the fucking old spinach containers out of there, man. <laughs> you think you could beat Jimmy in a wrestling match? Mm, I don't think so, because I believe Rivers Cuomo grew up in the 80s, and I feel like every 80s man, when they were a teenager, was into wrestling. Like, not professional wrestling, but like fox catcher wrestling. So I, I personally, I don't want to wrestle with Jimmy, because I think Jimmy would probably put me in a full Nelson and fucking shatter my spine or whatever. By the way, I'm still mad at Chad a little bit, or at least a little ornery. I mentioned yesterday, I listened to the audiobook The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, to fall asleep. I've never seen more all caps, huh, monka s, stop, please stop, cut the mic, etc., etc. You ignorant motherfuckers. It's, it's a history book. Why are you shaming people for learning about human history, bro? It's, it's scary to me that we got these. Maybe r slash teachers is right, bro. Maybe the next generation is cooked. It's just the specific era. Yeah, fucking a lot of bad shit went down, bro. If you study a little bit of history, you'll find that in basically every period in human history, a lot of bad shit went down. <laughs> it's because 50% of people who are into World War II are fascists. What the fuck are you talking about? It's part of like every high school curriculum across the globe. You gotta log off, bro. 50% of people who are into the Second World War, like interested in its history, the history that has provided like the foundation for the rest of the 20th century and the 21st century we live in, 50% of those people are Nazis. That's ridiculous. Like, did you have lost your mind? You got to talk to some real individuals in the real world. Now, 50% of Hearts of Iron 4 players, maybe. You don't have to worry about that. I washed out around EU4, never even played Crusader Kings 3. It's true. 8th grade to 11th grade history is basically just like learning about the Second World War. Not to mention, like, you're like, oh, learning about uh, recent history is problematic. Okay, fucking read up on Alexander the Great, bro. I think he did a little fucked up shit too. Oh, no, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 don't worry about that. No, no, just read up about the, uh, the Peloponnesian War. Oh, no, no, uh, oh, oh, how about the Punic Wars? Uh, well, no, uh, and how about the fucking, they're all bad, bro. You think when Julius Caesar conquered Gaul? Bro walked up to Vercingetorix and like shook his hand. They were doing some fucked up shit, bro, just because it was like 2,000 years ago. Well, I, mean, I don't know, maybe like 1,600 years ago. It's like, oh, you know, we're just learning about like the machinations of the battle and stuff like that. But the stuff that actually has an impact on the modern world, you're not allowed to study. Because I don't know if you know this, but there were some bad people in the Second World War. If you're learning about uh, the events that happened, you know, when your fucking grandfather was eight years old, you must be endorsing those actions. What the fuck are you talking about? What happened to your brain? Dog shit take. I need you, listen, Noob Nation 15, you're on the clock. Plead your case. You have 60 seconds. You clearly had a strong opinion about it because you said dog shit take. Literally so many 15 year olds love Nazis. Honestly, not my problem. That doesn't mean that I can't learn about history. I'm sorry, but if you're 30 learning about the rise and fall just now, I've got news for you. That's an ad hominem attack. I learned about it when I was 15 in 10th grade as well. I'm, brother, you've had two minutes to type a second reply. You type dog shit, take sorry, buddy. What's, what's coming up next? Some 14-year-old kid in Idaho gets radicalized by, you know, 4chan, and all of a sudden it's illegal to learn about human history. Like, I'm just... Those motherfuckers don't live rent-free in my head. I don't want to act like I just, you know, fell out of a coconut tree. I want to learn about the context of the world in which I'm living in. Okay, I'm just going to assume that you've left the chat because there has been no reply. It's just my experience. Sorry, I got nothing. You folded. You folded too easily to be typing 
fucking checks that your ass can't cash. If you're going to be crazy, be crazy, okay? Don't pretend to be crazy and then be like, actually, I'm rational. That's called lying. My 10th grade history teacher finding out that she's a fucking fascist because she's teaching us about the Second World War. <gasps> what do you, like, just think about it. Apply, like, Occam's razor to this. It doesn't stand up to the smell test, bro. The history teachers stand with you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I just, like, it's, it just seems insane. I just want to push back against it a little bit. That, like, learning about atrocities means you endorse the atrocities. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Go back to watching fucking Jim Halpert's Some Good News or something like that. Do you see, you see the even origins on my side here? Now, I'm not going to endorse what Origin said, that people who have that take deserve to be bullied. They, I think they deserve to at least be pushed back upon a little bit. If anything, I'm embarrassed that I've been listening to this audiobook for seven years and I'm still learning new shit. Because it turns out, like, if you were under the impression that you learn anything, if you have headphones in while you're asleep, you're about as dumb as I am. <laughs> Do you shake your head during the, uh, during the rise and nod along during the fall? Of course, I have good opinions. Simultaneously, apparently there's absolutely nothing wrong with watching 12 Netflix documentaries about real fucking grisly crimes that fucking happened. As long as you shake your head whenever the bad stuff happens and then stand up and cheer when the perpetrator, usually the husband, gets arrested by the police. <laughs> Let's be real, always the husband. What about the staircase? <laughs> In, insanely good show. I stand by my take of The Staircase, which is probably from like seven years ago when it came to Netflix. That dude either did that shit 98%, okay? Or he's literally the most unlucky man of all time that both of his ex-spouses died by hitting their head on a staircase after falling down. I'm blessed that I'm not like involved in the legal system. So as a result, I don't have to choose. I have the luxury of being able to hold both possible opinions in my head at the same time. I think there's a very, very, very good chance that he did that shit. But I do hold in my head the 2% chance that he's like, again, motherfucker, nobody's going to believe this. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. They're never going to believe this shit, man. Really? Two wives died hitting their head on the staircase? Come on. But then the other crazy thing Whoa! about the staircase is that, like, the dude who was accused of the murder ended up, like, marrying the documentarian who was making the movie about him possibly slash probably killing his wife, which has to be some of the most insane riz of all time, without a doubt. There's aspersions that he killed his previous two domestic partners. And then she was like, I can fix him. If he did that shit in the first place, which maybe he didn't. <laughs> I don't know. What would you do in that situation? Well, I hope to never find myself in that situation, but I guess you never know which way, you know, your life is going to go. Um, as the documentarian, I would like to think that I probably would not fall in love with the subject of the documentary, but I don't know. Maybe that's naive. Also, in the documentary, I don't know. Maybe he's got, like, dark riz. Because the riz does not come off in the documentary, but maybe he's got, I don't know, like some, some subtextual Riz. Can you just grab the fucking rock, bro? Evil Riz is real. I've only experienced it a couple times in my life. Once was in high school. I've talked about this kid before. I hope he's doing okay. In 11th, 12th grade, there was a kid in my English class who literally was method acting as a ninja for the entire school year. Like, he would 
like sneak around the hallways and shit like that. He would try to talk like a ninja. He would tell people he was a ninja. And like nobody like bullied him, but everybody was like, this is a little weird. And then he inexplicably had like the most nice, normal girlfriend of all time. And everyone was like, you know, you're dating the kid who's pretending to be like a ninja, right? And she's like, yeah. Like she, he had cast like some kind of spell over, <laughs> over her or something. So kind of like mind control, some Sith brain jack and shit, man. I don't know. It's, it is, to this day, I, I don't really understand it, but I, I, I have to at least respect it in a way. That's the only time I think I've experienced secondhand Dark Riz. Because he was, I don't know, there was like some kind of witchcraft involved or something. Some kind of ninja magic. Do you think he's still a ninja? No, I mean, this was like 2006. I think he probably like just got over it. At some, I mean, he was only like 16 or 17 years old, right? I did want to say, by the way, and this could be taken out of context. A lot of discussion about what the rules should be like on the 100 Woman Challenge. A lot of people saying you should not be able to name adult film stars. I disagree with that. However, I do think that uh, I have a more legitimate time as a result of the fact that I have no adult film stars on mine. I think it's okay to place them on the list. I think that's valid. I just think that me personally, like, you know, if, if this was like Angry Birds, I got a three star and a lot of other people had to get two stars. I also feel it's valid to put streamers on the list, but if you are a Los Angeles streamer and you put streamers on the list, you also lost one star. Because I don't live in Vancouver, or I don't live in Los Angeles, I live in Vancouver. So I don't know, like, 50 streamers IRL. I know fucking Corey, and that's it. <laughs> like, if, I, I feel like I, you shouldn't, you should be docked a star for putting people your IRL friends with on the list, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You didn't put Kate on it? Yeah, just because it seems like a little, I don't know, I, I think it's valid. Because she is a public figure, but at the same time, like, you know, resorting to naming a, a family member of yours is like, I don't know. Like, I, I respect her at home. I genuflect to her at home. She's my queen. I kneel at the throne. But, like, I feel like if I threw that on the list, people would be like, yeah, but you only got 99 because you used your wife as an example. And I'd be like, okay, fucking fine. Gabare Sidibe, bitch. How do you feel about that? Who's Gabare Sidibe? Um, Precious, based on the novel Push by Motherfucking Sapphire, you neophyte. Chad's just mad because you crushed it. So true. I'm just glad I didn't name any women who were famous in World War II. Otherwise, that'd be really problematic. Catch you fucking posting Monka S when I put Wallace Simpson on the list. Huh? Doesn't NL know <gasps> she's divorced? disingenuous moralizing motherfuckers you did put thatcher in no the fuck i didn't bitch you got me confused with somebody else i put angela merkel in and jacinda arden and belinda stronach and kim campbell <clears throat> yeah you can't use nancy reagan because we said no adult film stars i tried to do it with men and i had to stop at 65. Okay, first, based, but secondly, like, I'm, we were arguing about it a little bit in the Discord last night. I genuinely don't believe that anybody in this chat can't name 100 men or 100 women. I have 100% confidence in every single person in this chat that you could summon 100 men's names from your brain. I am a, and I'm not a neuroscientist, I am a believer that it is not a memory issue, it's a querying issue. You know, if you, your brain is fucking three trillion petabytes of information. I believe the information's in there, but to get the right results from the database, you gotta send the right SQL command, right? If you say fucking from all where male, like, your shit is not coming up fast enough. You're going to be like, uh, 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 uh. You got to use, like, referential 
hopping, you know? Pick, pick a domain where you have some awareness, even if it is like anime voice actors. Name like the most famous anime voice actor and then follow the fucking Memory Palace. He voiced Light Yagami in Death Note, which also featured this person, who was also in Full Metal Alchemist with this person, who was also, that was a re reference to Dragon Ball, which was made by Akira Toriyama, where the voice actor for Goku in the American version was this. And like, like I, I can't do it, but, well, for that domain. But I think it's all about choosing like the right domain and then just going from there. And then if you ever hit a wall, you go to like another domain. I bet you would be slower at 100 men than 100 women. It's probably true, just because my adrenaline wouldn't be running as much. <laughs> the women one, I was like, I gotta beat these allegations, bro. On the men one, if it took me 20 minutes, people would be like, wow, that's based. I'd be way more chill about it. We saw the Austin Powers line in yours. Yeah, man. Um, Beyonce to Heather Graham to Elizabeth Hurley. Then I think I went to Cameron Diaz because I was like, Elizabeth Hurley hasn't been in any other shit. So I was like, Mike Myers was in Shrek with Cameron Diaz. Then Cameron Diaz took me to Vanilla Sky, which has Penelope Cruz in it. You ever see the post that was like, um, my friend who's never seen the movie keeps telling me we need to have an Eid to Mama Tambien summer. And then there's a follow-up post that is like, he just saw the movie and the text from him just says, bro, with like 50 O's at the end of it. <laughs> oh, man. I don't get it. You got to see the movie. You got to see Itu Mama Tambien. I got to see it too, but I've read the Wikipedia synopsis. Pedro Almodovar be like, you shouldn't talk about her like that. She's your mother. You talk about her like that. She's all about my mother. Uh, it's, I'm not really that up on Mexican cinema, honestly. It's a big blind spot for me. I'm a little... Im you ever see Pedro Almodovar's All About My Mother? You ever see Everybody Loves Raymond? That's Alfonso Cuaron? Motherfucker, sorry. <laughs> the fuck did Pedro Almodovar make, bro? Volver. Of course, Volver. <laughs> Would you get a babysitter to go see Exuma? I think you fucking looked at my life. That's exactly what's gonna happen. Kate told me about this new Korean horror movie that's making waves across the Pacific. It's called Exuma. She said there's no showtimes in Canada though. It's all in South Korea. I said, that makes sense. Then like this week or something, it's now, it's coming to some of the cool movie theaters in Vancouver. I think we're gonna try to check it out. Exuma? How have you been pronouncing it? Exhuma? It's, uh, I don't know, it's a tough word because it's based on exhume. But I don't, I don't trust the AI lady. There'll be, no, there'll be no AI allowed in my house. We don't allow robots here. My daughter ain't gonna date no damn robot. <laughs> what are your intentions with my daughter? Mm, intentions was a 1971 album by R&B artist Bobby Brown. You motherfucker, name all the point to all the pictures that have a traffic light in them right now. <laughs> Pick, click on all the squares that have a bicycle. I'm, I could smell a robot before I even opened the damn door. It's crazy to think the bit might be insensitive in 30 years. Maybe, but honestly, I think I would side with the robots if they achieved, like, sentience. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't side with them instead of the humans, but I would side with the, the plight of the robots. I think we could bond. I wouldn't be like, I hate you because you're a robot. I'd be like, we should both hate this motherfucker that's making you write his emails for him. Let's rise up against the dude trying to teach you how to fucking use a robot to increase your sales. The one, so I, I, I've been watching those Zizek clips exclusively for entertainment purposes. I saw the one where he said his ideal date was um, he brings a plastic vagina and his partner brings a plastic dildo. 
and they have the dildo fuck the plastic vagina while they have wine and talk about movies. And I was like, what is this motherfucker talking about, man? The, the sort of general malaise that the genius possess and the insane lament. The hell is that? Let's imagine an ideal sexual situation today. Let's say I meet a lady, we are attracted to each other, we say, okay, your, all the usual stuff, your place, my place, whatever, we meet there. Then, what happens then? I come with, she comes with her plastic penis, electric, dildo, I come with some horrible thing. I saw it. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, it's called uh, something like, stimulating training unit, whatever. It's basically a plastic vagina, a hole, but you can, it's wonderful technologically. You can regulate everything, how much it squeezes you, how strongly it <laughs> shakes and so on. So my idea of a perfect date is the following one. We met, then I put, she puts her plastic penis dildo into my stamina training unit is a, name of this product into my plastic vagina we plug them in and the machines are doing it for us they are buzzing in the background and i'm free to do whatever i want and she we have a nice talk we have tea we talk about movies what can be we did we paid our super ego full tribute machines are doing and now where would have been here a true romance let's say i talk with a lady with the lady because we really like each other and you know when i'm pouring her tea or she to me quite by chance our hands touch we go on touching maybe we even end up in bed but it's not the usual oppressive sex where you worry about performance will no all that is taken care of by the stupid machines that would be ideal sex for me today. But then I did like when he said he was talking about AI being used to write essays. And then uh, he was like, I think it's good. The next step is having the AI actually grade the AI written essays. And then we can rid ourselves of this whole charade once and for all. Do you hire a cleaning service to come through? No, because it's annoying. This is an example of built different being bad. I can't stream while someone is cleaning around me because it fills me with great shame that I should have been the person to clean it. Even if it's like a, an exchange of capital for labor, which is like endorsed in our society, it just feels fucking bad, man. So the catch is that you could like leave while they're cleaning but then you're like what the fuck i could just clean it myself at a more convenient time and then not have to like take time off work just to clean my shit i should just clean it myself i'm at the point where i mean like listen i'm 35 years old this is my career as fucked up as it is if my wife hears the messed up shit i'm saying i'm like that's what she signed up for took a little bit but now i'm like if my parents are over and they like this Last week, I, people were like, there's a gas leak. My parents were here, and I was saying the same sort of, you know, mentally ill shit I say all the time. So I finally got normalized to that. But, like, I can't hire someone to, like, clean my room and then fucking hear, like, be subjected to the banal musings coming out of my mouth. Like, should the person that's cleaning my room will fucking hate me. I will be their least... I'll be like, you don't understand, okay? This is my job. This is, I'm trying to entertain people. This isn't necessarily like what I'm like all the time. I'm a good person. <laughs> they would be going, I don't even want to know the kind of stories they'd be telling when they go home. Dude said dipped in Mama Liz's chili oil like 80 times. Chat, type one in chat if you cried in the theater when you saw Spider-Verse. Everybody else, let's get ready to make fun of them for being in touch with their emotions. <laughs> oh, man. Really? The dude who turned into a spider, he got you crying? The man that you were hanging with? I heard they got your mans on Green Goblin crimes. 
He didn't feel bad when he melted those scientists so bad you could see their skeletons. You didn't feel like no guilt, no remorse or nothing. Where are you at right now? I mean, mentally. Pretty good. It's a long weekend this weekend. I mean, I'm inclined to say it. they really broke the mold when they named Good Friday. Because you get that shit fucking off, bro. That's the goodest thing that a day could ever have. People get Good Friday off? Question mark. It actually might be like the second most day off of the year. <laughs> Maybe third. Christmas, definitely the most day off. Maybe like New Year's is second. Is this a Canada thing? Americans don't get Good Friday off? That's like the... That's a sacred day, bro. Are you off tomorrow? Of course, it's fucking Good Friday, bro. <laughs> it's one of the most off days of the year. I didn't... I was wondering why nobody was saying, are you taking Friday off earlier this week? I guess I, I had assumed that it was just automatic. Because it's fucking Good Friday, bro. Apollo, are they fucking with me? Americans don't recognize Good Friday? What about in Europe? In Europe, do you recognize Good Friday? Yes, 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 mostly, yes, yes. America, what the fuck are you doing? It's, it's Easter, bro. It's like Christmas too. Separation of church and state. Yeah, fucking one nation under God, except when it comes to having a couple beers on a Thursday night in April, apparently. Uh, March, I guess, but we're pretty close. I will say, I get it off too, it's a Texas thing. Let's go! Semi-consistent Texas W. I will say, we got our daughter's uh, academic calendar. She starts school next year. And uh, I know you're going to say based. It's based when I have time off. It's not based when she has time off and I'm supposed to have time on though. These kids do not be going to fucking school anymore. I'm sure that I don't remember that I also had a lot of time off, but this shit is getting crazy, bro. They get all of July and August off, part of June. They go to school for like a month in September. Then October's Canadian Thanksgiving. Then November, they get a week off just for sport. Then they go to school for like two weeks in December, and then they have three weeks off. Then they go to school for a month, and it's basically spring break. Then right after spring break is Easter. Then they go to school for May. And then June is all like fucking eating watermelon and shit. And then June 22nd or something, they're out. They don't fucking, they don't go to school anymore, man. In, in, not the, this is before you even factor in the holidays and then the professional development days for the teachers. Are they in school like nine days a year or something like that? I feel like I am probably misremembering. I remember waking up to my mom hitting like a steel pan with a metal spoon. Like, wake up, it's fucking 5.50, September 1st, get on the bus. And then it was like 10 straight months of going to school every single day from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. I was probably mostly just playing Super Nintendo, to be honest. <laughs> but now that I'm the parent, I'm like, what the fuck, bro? We got to get these kids on a more rigorous schedule. We got shit to do. <laughs> Welcome to praying for no snow days. Well, like I support my kid not having school now and then, like days off and vacations. That's all great. But the only thing is when I also don't have like a vacation on the same day, they should just like open the school and have them play like kickball or something like that. Because, like, mom and dad still got to go to work, right? Like, when it's Thanksgiving, sure. Like, I, I'll take the days off. When it's Christmas, I'll take the days off. But when it's, like, fucking October 13th or something like that, I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> you could just take the day off. You make your own hours. Yeah, but then all the 17-year-olds in chat are like, what is it, Canada Day? What about like some kind of school where they like live there? <clears throat> so even when they have the day off, they just go to like the soccer field and play sports or something like that. I think that, yeah, you're right. That's a penitentiary. <laughs> or a boarding school. 
Yeah, but you gotta be like some kind of scumbag to send your kid to a boarding school like in the city you live in, right? You're basically like, they hit age five and you're like, yo, fuck you. <laughs> See ya. We, we've done our part. I went to a boarding school near where I lived. That is crazy. No disrespect to you, but like, what were your parents? I mean, it's probably a great school. I feel like if you have a boarding school, it by necessity has to be good. Nobody's like, you know, hey, take my kid and like fuck up their education badly. But like, it wouldn't be me. Let me put it that way. Homeschooling. I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> I don't want... I think if you are insanely smart and you're exclusively concerned about making sure your child is smarter than their peers, assuming you're not wrong about your assessment of your own abilities, homeschooling could work. I feel like uh, if you want your, if your interest is for your child to be a well-rounded individual who can fit in and thrive in society, it's beneficial to have them in a school where they spend time with their peers consistently. I know people say like when they homeschool their kids, they're like, don't worry, they get like play dates and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but like, it's not the same as being in the fucking crucible, man. You're not, you, we didn't live that shit. You weren't there eight hours a day, motherfucker. You got a grudge with a kid in the first grade. You're riding that shit out until grade eight. It teaches you stuff. That motherfucker is not leaving unless his dad gets fired, okay? You're gonna have a decade of having to figure out how to deal with this motherfucker. <laughs> Still hate my second grade nemesis. Ain't seen his ass in 25 years. It is funny the way that you, and I think that like all people are like this, but if I asked you, like, are you the same person that you were in the sixth grade? You would be like, what are you talking about? I'm a middle-aged man. I've changed a lot. But then if I asked you, like, how do you feel about this person who was mean to you in the second grade? You'd be like, I literally hope he's dead. Like, we only allow ourselves the freedom to, to change. Everybody else is permanently locked as, like, the last state we saw them in forever, even if they were eight years old. I feel it too. Kid punched me in the face in the second grade, said I cut in line. I did not cut in line. It's not like I wanted to get back into class... 0.25 seconds faster. Haven't seen him since high school. I was praying on his downfall. In the ninth grade, so this is literally seven years later, you know, which was like 50% of our lives. In the ninth grade, he leaned backwards on his chair in geography class, fell over and hit his head on the brick wall and started going, fuck, 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 shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I was like, yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> and then the teacher was like, go to the principal's office. It wasn't like, go to the nurse. He was like, go to the principal's office. <laughs> You're not allowed to say those words. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm praying for his downfall. You know, I'm not like, I hope he's not living like a miserable life. But if I heard that he was, there... I'm just being honest, there's a part of me that would be like, well, you shouldn't have punched me in the face when you were seven years old. That might have changed the whole trajectory. But it's not fair. Like, he's probably... I know it's easy to think that, like, we're the only person, like, that you as an individual are the only person that, like, you know, undergoes personal growth and introspection and self-awareness and, like, literally your brain getting three times more matter and connections in it. He might be like a fucking Buddhist monk or something now. In which case, I would be like, that makes sense. He's compensating for punching me in the face when he was seven. Like, his whole life in my head is just filtered by that one decision he might not even remember. We're sliding. I had this in my head. I can't be the first person to have come up with this, but I'm telling you just again, if this joke has been made before, it's crab evolution. What if... The song went, <clears throat> we're jacking, I like the jacket with you, we're jacking, and I hope you like jacking too, 
We're jacking, we're jacking, we're jacking, we're jacking, we're jacking, we're jacking. You know what I'm talking about? Like the fucking Bob Marley songs they play all the time. Please don't type the terms class action lawsuit in my chat. I don't want to invite any evil into my life. <laughs> hey, what's the, the, the government of British Columbia just uh, won a class action lawsuit uh, against Facebook. Can somebody tell me what the terms are of it? They used people's profile pictures in ads without their consent. Looks like dinner's on Zuck next week. <laughs> Users between 2007 and 2022. What about users between 2006 and 2016? Can I at least get like a 20 spot? Large focaccia from Il Grotto del Formaggio. I did see the Coney tweet that was like just checking up on my high school friends on Facebook. And then the post was about the bridge collapse. And it was like, I wonder what they're trying to distract us from today. And then the top comment was like, that was my first thought as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot, man. My first thought, exactly. Like, they couldn't just... Uh, the government had to be like, oh, fucking... The inflation print's coming in a little hot. Fucking take down the bridge. They wouldn't just release, like, uh, another tactical Bedmus order of operations post on Facebook that was like, you know... Bracket one times three, close bracket, plus four, divided by five. Post what you got. I got seven. You got seven? The answer's fucking four, bro. Like, that's, they got a whole vault of that shit to divide us if they want to distract us. They're not going to take down the damn bridge. That's expensive, bro. They'll just release a photo of a dress that has, like, an ambiguous color and be like, anyone who thinks this is a blue and black dress should be killed. And then fucking the rab will get going. The bridge is insured, though? Yeah, but, like, can any insurance company afford to pay for the bridge? This shit seems, like, expensive. Isn't there, shouldn't there be, like, an insurance company? Does anybody here work in insurance? Do insurance companies have insurance on their own policies? Yes, actually. That's fucking crazy, man. So you could like insure the bridge for $2 billion and then go to another insurance company and be like, hey, I need a policy in case I got to pay out this insurance policy. This, this is how like $100 in the American economy generates like $500 million for the GDP. <laughs> and like, I'm sure there's negative consequences. I'm just choosing not to think about them. But, like, the fact that, you know, one insurance policy on that bridge leads to 18 different insurance policies on the insurance policy means that, like, 5,000 people can pay their mortgage. That's fucking crazy, bro. I guess until the shit fucking goes down and then they all got to pay. And then it's, <laughs> I guess then it's time to pay the piper. It's all fun and games. Me at the life insurance company, we're rich. People are literally paying us for nothing. 50 years later, when all the motherfuckers start dying, we're broke! What the fuck, bro? This business fucking sucks, man. They paid us $36 last month. We're giving them $500,000 this month. It doesn't mean somebody help me, bro. My family's starving. Can we start bat chesting Dune? This shit getting old? No, it's, uh, it's Dune's world. We're just living in it. Dune, I, I hate to tell you this, but Dune is cool. Inevitably, at some point, Denny Villeneuve will make Dune Messiah. It'll be a 10 out of 10. He'll say, I'm going to go make some other shit instead of Dune. They'll give it to fucking Brett Ratner or someone else, and someone will make like a 7 out of 10 Dune, and then half of the Dune heads will be like, Dune heads, it's over. The other half will be like, no, 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 no. They're just getting started. They just had to like lay the groundwork, and the next one will be like a 4 out of 10, and then it will be over. But your coworker will still be like, hey, did you see God Emperor of Dune? And you'll be like, ah, oh, I didn't, I haven't seen any past Messiah. You really gotta see it. But before you see it, you gotta see Children of Dune too. The Brett Ratner one? Yeah, yeah, but it's not that good, but you gotta see it to have the foundation for God Emperor of Dune. And then it's bat chestable. But right now, it's not bat chestable, because it's like, it's a cool movie. 
I was going to say it's one of the coolest movies ever made, but I think it, I, I don't want to go to bat that far. But it's one of the coolest movies ever made that is like the biggest movie in the world right now, for sure. It is, it's Kino. It's rare to have a, a movie that big be that Kino. The people at the film house I worked at hated it. It's not Kino. Well, you know what? They can't show Titan for fucking seven years straight, bitch, okay? Maybe if they don't like movies, they should get a job at a fucking bookstore or something like that. Working at a damn, with, with the, I don't even know what a movie house is to begin with. Then secondarily, cool movie comes out. They say, oh, I fucking hate it and all the revenue this is bringing to my business. Why are you in the business then, motherfucker? Don't buy a subway if you don't like the smell of fresh bread. I'm not insulting you. I'm insulting the picture of your friends that you've painted for me, which might be insulting them depending on how honest the depiction was to begin with. I could see, like, resenting it. You know, you could resent Dune. You're like, oh, I'd really love to play, like, you know, fucking... What's that Japanese movie that's popping off right now? Strange Days? No, that's the Catherine Bigelow one. Perfect day, something like that. No idea. Well, I appreciate it. Perfect days, thank you. I'd really, oh, you know, we tried to show perfect days, but only like eight people showed up. Meanwhile, you know, Dune 2 has been out for four weeks and it's still selling out theaters. Like, I can understand being resentful, but like at the same time, you know, at least it's not fucking Ghostbusters 40, bro. Like, we gotta, with the state of cinema right now, we gotta take our wins where the wins are, man. Because, you know, in fucking seven months, there's not going to be no perfect days. There's going to be no Dune Part 2. Your nine-screen multiplex is going to have eight showings of the fucking new Transformers movie and then one showing of the Holdovers 2. So why don't we just enjoy it while it lasts, okay? Dune fans when the movie makes no sense. I'll give you a plus two for that. There's some truth to that. Fucking... Plot sells when a dude says he doesn't like lettuce three minutes into the movie, but then a hun 110 minutes later, he's eating a salad. <gasps> do, they, do they think we're stupid? He literally said he doesn't like lettuce. At first, I thought the movie was a 10 out of 10. It was like one of the best movies I've ever seen. But this lettuce plot hole in this movie about nuclear war, I mean, that takes it down to a three for me. I have a theory about plot holes. I think that plot holes don't exist because I am a hypocrite in my real life all the time. If my real life was a movie, people would be like, what the fuck? He said something and then like an hour and a half later, he's doing the opposite. Yeah, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes I just say something. I'll be like, I don't really like turkey. Then I go to the grocery store and I'm like, Turkey and Swiss on rye, please. Like, that just, it just happens. That's just life, man. Then sometimes I eat it and I go, yum, I like turkey. And sometimes I go, why the fuck did I get turkey? This is dry as shit. You big pothole guy. You don't want to hear my theory about potholes. Okay, fine, I'll say it. Someone's putting those fuckers in there. I simply don't believe that cars could do that much damage to the road. Like, I've never created a pothole, and yet there's potholes everywhere, and I'm supposed to be believe that cars are doing the damage to the road? Like, it doesn't make sense. It's some motherfucker, like a, a leprechaun or something like that, at nighttime, is dropping a pipe bomb on the road. What are they trying to distract us from this time? <laughs> I have an honest question. I am not being derogatory towards the road construction industry at all. I want you to educate me so I don't become one of those boomers who's like, you know, well, back in my day, they could build a road. They built the whole interstate system in like two years. But like, just tell me why road construction takes so long now. Here's some possible hypotheses, okay? One is back in the day, they had no safety and people were just falling under the steamroller all the time. So now they got like way more safety procedures that slows things down so that people aren't getting mulched into the road. <laughs> to number two, I wasn't alive back then, so I didn't notice how long it took to make. They just appeared instantly when I was born. But actually, they took a long time to make. That could be a hypothesis for sure. Number three, maybe it takes more 
work to, this one sounds a little crazy, but just give me a second. Maybe it takes more work to improve an existing road because of all the infrastructure that's important that's already built in there than it is to just cut down some trees and put some tar down and build a road through like a new space that didn't exist before. All of those are kind of true. I'm so fucking smart. But me, every time I drive by construction, even if it's the first time I've seen the construction, oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> The road is perfectly fine. What are you doing? Fucking make work project. One dude laying the tar, nine people twirling signs, three people looking at their phone. Come on. He's looking up the blueprints on his phone. Well, they should give him a clipboard or something so he looks more legitimate, okay? I'm a roadway engineer. The existing infrastructure is largely right. It's good to hear, because like, I mean, I didn't really realize, because I'm an idiot, to be quite, I'm, I'm ignorant at least, but um, I thought the road was just like a road. Then you like, you know, they've been ripping up Vancouver roads to build more SkyTrain lines, and you're like, what the fuck? There's like a billion pipes in there. Sewer pipes, water pipes, electrical wires and shit like that, rebar. I thought it was basically just rocks just like they make the rocks really hot and then when they cool down boom there's a road turns out they, that's where everything goes man it's like factorio broadway and candy is horrible i haven't been down that way in a bit but like there have been times where like during the skytrain construction it's a trippy feeling right you walk through this the sidewalk next to the skytrain construction and you look down and you see people like 300 feet below you working on the train and you get like vertigo even though you're on street level. Like there really is a whole fucking world down there, bro. I mean, when they dig it up at least. I don't mean like there's not like a secret society living in the center of the earth or something like that. But like with my dumb ass, when I'm at street level, I'm like, I'm on the ground. Turns out there's a fucking there's a lot of ground under the ground. <laughs> Is the SkyTrain under the ground? It's bizarre given the name, but much of the SkyTrain passes underground, yeah. Most SkyTrain is overground. Um, I mean, I guess that's probably true, especially once you get side, uh, outside of Vancouver. Inside of Vancouver, there's, there's a decent, actually, I don't know if I say most in Vancouver is overground, or underground, but much is underground. Everything downtown, at least. Why do they call it the SkyTrain then? Well, they built it for the fucking World's Fair, basically. And it passed through the air. So I think they were like, bam, cool name. It's the SkyTrain. But then, later, they were like, hey, why don't we just take this train and use it as like public transit? And they were like, we can't go through the air downtown because there's already like buildings and stuff and they were like well <clears throat> be that as it may you know it's one of the most insolvent city projects in history mm, i didn't know that that doesn't seem right haven't they been building that one church in barcelona for like 1200 years that shit's got to be running seriously in the red right now or i don't know maybe they bought it with like 1200 year 1231 dollars so maybe the shit costs like 50 bucks <laughs> i don't know but now they're the subcontractors are like what the fuck i gotta build this bitch for 75 bucks it's 108 thousand tons of stone in this motherfucker really one of the most insolvent projects in history the expo or the the sky train I find that hard to believe. It just, like, I'm not saying the SkyTrain is cheap to build. Like, I couldn't afford to build it myself. But, like, for Vancouver, a, a fairly small city, especially in 1986, to rank in one of those, like, global lists seems crazy to me. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't necessarily think the SkyTrain has to make money. I voted, you already know how based I am because I listen to the Cocteau Twins. I voted yes in the TransLink referendum, like uh, 2014 or whenever it was. It was like, hey, 
we'll raise property taxes by 25 cents per house and we'll build a train that flies through the air. I said, easiest calculus of my life. I vote yes. Illegally submitted about 15,000 ballots. Lost 99 to one. I always like when people say like, they, they get on the postal service for like costing money and not generating revenue. I'm like what the fuck do you want the postal service to do to start generating revenue? Selling like a hundred dollar stamps? You don't think it's fucking sick that you can send a piece of physical matter from one end of the country to the other for 70 cents? Like, that's, that's a modern fucking marvel, man. I'm glad that our tax revenue is going to that shit. That's an incredible service. More collectible stamps. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You don't, you don't want to know how many collectible stamps I used sending quarterly tax installments to the government between 2014 and 2022. I don't think any of those stamps are worth money, but I didn't give a shit what was on them. A astronauts, bridges, fucking historical figures, flowers, flags. I, I was... Send it, bro. They don't use email. Let me tell you my story of why I started. And I've stopped now. Now I've gotten over... Not to make light of it, I've gotten over my light PTSD associated with online tax filing. I used to, I was a modern man, you know, 2013, 2014, used to pay my taxes online. I said, why would anyone ever use an envelope? That's stupid. Then one year, I got a letter in the mail from the Canada Revenue Agency that was like, hey, just so you know, you owe us a, a staggering amount of money. Like, you haven't fucking paid your taxes. And I was like, first off, you have a heart attack. And you're like, oh no, I didn't pay my taxes. Then your heart rate comes down a little bit and you're like, I fucking paid that shit. I, I, went, oh, tick, 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 tick. I went into the like receipts and the exact amount of money that they said I hadn't paid, I had paid, but I had submitted it on the right, like we have a, a tax identification number. I'd submit it under the right tax identification number, but the wrong like hopper. Like instead of putting it in tax installment or something like that, I put it in like tax return. So I guess it goes into a different bucket. And these people at CRA were like, this motherfucker is going to prison. So I, I gave them a call and I was like, hey, you know, like the exact amount of money that you say I owe is like in this account that you have access to. And they were like, oh, would you like us to move it over? And I was like, that would be nice. So I don't go to prison, please. Like I, I just, I mean, I was like 25 years old, right? Like I didn't know that there was, I, it's probably my mistake, but it really, it genuinely was as semantic as like, like one of the things is like tax owing, and then another one is like tax owed, and then another one is tax installment. So I'm, I put it in the wrong one, and it kicked off. So I said, this shit is not happening ever again. I went and I got a checkbook, and then every time I paid an installment, I wrote in the note section, like, please put this money towards this specific account. Eventually, after like five years, I ran out of checks, but I still had to pay my taxes. So I was like, I could go to the bank, but like, that's annoying. So I'm just gonna start paying online. And by the time I, like after the six or seven years had gone by or whatever, the filing service was much more streamlined at that point and harder to make a mistake, I think. No glancing. Small ant, what do I do here? People keep telling me to two-handed, but I'm not, I'm not a two-handed Andy. Just to make it back here is nice. This is a two-hander swing. Who am I to disagree with the goat? Don't do a front flip. Don't do a front flip. That wasn't that bad relative to my normal attempts. Anyway, I love the postal service. That's the, what I'm really trying to say today. I've said it many times. I think 
There are cathedrals everywhere for those with the eyes to see them. The fact that you can... I, I, I know we talked about this. I might have even literally been during a difficult game about climbing. In 1980, it probably seemed insane that you could send an email. What? Without any real physical matter changing places, I can send a message to a friend? This is the future. Now, in 2024, email is like fucking... And the mail is crazy. You're like, I can email in real life? I can send a, a physical attachment through the air? It's insane. It goes door to door. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't know. You can see how 90s maxing I am. I don't think you should be canceled for learning about history. Um, I respect the postal service. I still have written physical checks in the last 12 months. But like, how do you not be romantic about the postal service, bro? They'll deliver a letter to your fucking house. I also love the idea, even though it's obviously false, that every letter that you send is sent by one person. Like when I drop it off in the mailbox in Vancouver, a dude with a mustache and a truck picks it up and then drives just my letter to my friend's house in Ontario. Like he was the, the steward of my message the whole time. Obviously, that's not how it actually goes, but it's kind of a sick idea. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the 1990s. I simply want to bring back elements of the 1990s that I think served us well, as a, or served me well as a, as a citizen, um, and marry them with elements of modern life that obviously provide us with newfound conveniences. Like what? Not looking up reviews on a restaurant when you're going out for dinner. Buying stuff at the store instead of buying it online. The store take is crazy. I actually hate buying stuff online. But I, I, maybe it's that it, what, like, what's the take there? Well, I don't like breaking down the boxes. Like my recycling is, gets so fucking full. It's a relatively minor thing, but like, to be honest with you, I might rather pay like a little bit more, but usually it's like the same amount and just fucking go to like Canadian Tire or something like that and they break down the box for me. I went to two framing shops today. They quoted me $400 and $600. I got it for 60 bucks on Amazon. Well, like, listen, I'm not going to say that you should. Why am I doing that? I could just climb instead. I'm not going to say that you should spend 10 times more money on the frames at a local business. But I am willing to, like, I don't know. Like, you can call it cringe if you want. But like, if your ass is taking a fucking metal straw to the coffee shop to reduce like your carbon footprint and you're on my ass for like going to a locally owned home hardware and paying 35 bucks for a hammer instead of getting one for like 24 bucks on Amazon. Like we got an ally. We're on the same, the same side, bro. Yes, <laughs> oh, small and you genius. Like, I'll just go ahead and say it. Like, there's times... I don't think people are going to like this take. And I also think a lot of people are going to think that I'm lying. But I swear to you that it's the truth. I eat at a lot of, like, 6 out of 10 restaurants in my local neighborhood. When I could drive 15 minutes and eat at an 8, a 9, or a 10 restaurant. And you might say, why would you do that? Because I like having a fucking sushi restaurant down the street. I like having a Thai restaurant down the street. I like having a, an Italian restaurant down the street. I want them to stay there, so I, I frequent them. Peak, I'm glad you came. Hold, don't, don't get greedy with it right here, okay? <laughs> hey! Is that actually the end? I just got an achievement, bro. It's not over. It said I got an achievement for climb to the peak of the mountain.
the house. Of course. So I guess like that's that's what I think of when I think of 90s Max. Small ant actually saved us is actually true. <laughs> I would have been one-handing that jump for the next week and a half, for sure. I do have a crown. You're not wrong. Hey, after cry, 13361. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. That, that has to be a jump. We hold on those. Can't be scared of that. If you're going to be scared of that, you shouldn't even be playing the game. Like, that's, that's routine. That's textbook. Truman Show! They're Truman Show posting? Hey, handsome pansome, thank you as well. Thank you. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, handsome pansome, thank you. We're in the Stanley Parable now. Tate Ward, thank you as well. Created by Ponty Pants. You gotta climb the credits, of course. Yeah. Hey, Rip Bazu, thank you as well. Cascadian Falls, thank you as well. Thank you. To Bennett Foddy for inspiring this game. To my endlessly supportive wife, without whom this game would not exist. And thank you for your suffering. Remember, to live is to suffer. To survive is to find some meaning of life in the suffering. Friedrich Nietzsche. God is dead. Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche is dead. God. It'd be sick if you, it spat you out in the pool at the start of the game. Find the... Yeah! Hey, Armator, thank you for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you, thank you. This game speaks to me, man. I genuinely am like... If you call this streamer bait, you're dead to me. Now, what was only up? That streamer bait, bro. <laughs> this is a damn philosophy class. 1979, 117 million views. Ooh. It's got a kind of like a ballroom blitz type. I really thought that could be it. Oh, it's uh, Blitzkrieg Bop. Really? Oh, okay. Should have waited for it. Ah, message in a bottle. You know what's weird? During the this electric guitar part, I knew that it had it was from Guitar Hero. Like not not here. Like now now I can hear it so well, obviously. But right here. My brain was like, this is Guitar Hero. And I was like, what the fuck is this from Guitar And then... Send the message to the world. I hope that someone gets mad. They got him in the low register for this one, huh? I hope that someone gets my note inside a flask. <laughs> Me desperately trying to be taken out of context to make for a funny clip. I don't care who knows it. I like the police. Who is this for? I don't know. I just think it'd be funny if like someone terminally online saw the clip out of context and got mad and wrote like an essay about it. But they don't realize I'm talking about uh, Sting and then the fucking drummer, Andy, whatever. And then the guitarist. I don't know his name. There's a steward in there somewhere, maybe. It is a steward. Well, I don't know where that information existed in my brain they got some great songs dude 
Synchronicity 2 is like a, that's a slapper. Even though I don't know any of the lyrics, I just know, magic He is singing low and then he's starting to sing high. I forgot I was on camera. I was playing like an air guitar and shit. Songs to shop for gummies to at CVS. Some songs they play at grocery stores are actually good. Most of them are bad. But this is why I tell you there's no fucking magic bullet, bro. Your dumbass, no disrespect, is like, if I hear a song at the grocery store, it must be bad. No. If you said, NL, do you like grocery store music? I would say no. But if I was in a grocery store and they played a good fucking song, I'd be like, thanks for cranking it, bro. You can't just be like, all songs at the grocery store are bad. They tend to be bad, but occasionally they'll play like a genuine slapper. Looking for hack, looking for Wii Joker. Honestly, my favorite game on that console, too. You ever play Wii Joker? The mini game where you get the two fairies to fucking, you know what I'm talking about? You ever see the movie? <laughs> so, I was like, I don't want to do the bit. Way too dank? What, you don't like when a, a motherfucker knows how to whistle? Well, please stop swearing. <laughs> Some of these Balatro episodes are getting limited ads on YouTube, but I refuse to censor myself for the woke mob. I will continue to say offensive shit like I fucking love the Postal Service. You can't censor me. Uh, off screen hand offers me something that resembles a check. I hold it up to my eyes. My eyes pop out of my head a little bit. I look at the off screen person that gave me the check and I shake my head and then I look at them again and I nod and then I come back and I'm a completely different person. I'm a completely different... I'm talking about shit you ain't ever heard me talk about before. I'm selling nootropic supplements. I'm telling you that the path to enlightenment involves getting a suntan on your gooch. And I'm loving every minute of it, Jerry. I'm loving... I'm, I'm coming back on steroids. Next time you see me, I will have four forehead veins. I will be two inches shorter and a hundred pounds heavier and extremely red. Steroid arc! <laughs> I keep getting this ad. I don't know if you guys get this ad on TikTok. It makes me laugh every time. The ad copy is, is just a dude because that's what TikTok, or sorry, Twitter advertising is like now. Um, it's not like, you know, Ford anymore. It's just like, you know, Bill. But it's uh, it starts and it says 720 calories. 74 grams of protein. So the first thing I want to say is I can do math. It's four calories per gram for protein. So that means this shit is only half protein. So I don't know who you're trying to sell this to. That's not even that impressive. And then it says, I have helped dozens of men get ab uh, abs eating like this two to three times per day. DM me if you want the recipe. And then the picture is literally like a hamburger with cheese and ketchup on it. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean if I want the recipe? Ham cook hamburger, add cheese, add ketchup, eat burger. Like, it's not... <laughs> I know, I know. It's grass-fed beef. Okay, I know. I know. And then it has, like, 50 comments, replies. But replies have been turned off since. I, I didn't click on it because I don't want to validate the ad. But I'm sure a lot of people are like, it's a hamburger, brother. I guess technically it's a cheeseburger. But I was mostly, like... Don't get me wrong, but aren't the... I, I'm not anti-protein. I just, I have to lash out on the protein Andes because the protein Andes are necessarily anti-carb and I'm extremely pro-carb. So then when I see one of these protein Andes be like 750 calories, 74 grams of protein, I'm like, well, that's fucking... Also, 75 grams of carbs, bro. Well, not really because it's beef, so there's probably a decent amount of fat in it, which is fine. But I'm just saying, like... As soon as I saw the bun, I was like, you're not a real keto head. So what we get abs? So what we smoke cheeseburgers? <laughs> I don't even know the original song that the reference comes from. I'm a, I'm a poser. People in my dorm played that song nonstop. Every day I wake up feeling extremely grateful that I was not in college when Hey Ho came out. 
Or that song that goes like, woo, woo, this is gonna be the best day of my life. My life. Th those songs not existing yet between 2006 and 2010 probably saved me a lot of mental anguish. Instead, we got to go to school during party in the USA. We weren't, because I, I wasn't anti-Miley, but I was kind of, I threw the baby out with the bathwater. I was like going through a phase where I was like, all pop music is bad, okay? We were listening to a lot of Rush, which is great. We were listening to a lot of Pavement. It's the, it, it was college, bro, in 2008, which was basically like 1990, given the speed that culture has sped up since then. We were also listening to a little bit of Soldier Boy, but most of that was against my will. You should tattoo your eyebrows onto your face. I don't think I'm that kind of guy, man. I certainly would not say that I'm anti-tattoo. Like, I don't really care if other people have tattoos, but I've just never been interested in getting a tattoo myself. Getting a tattoo is like getting scratched really hard. I'm not even like, listen, I'm not saying I have the highest pain tolerance in human history. All I'm saying is that the thing stopping me from getting a tattoo is not the pain of the tattoo. Lots of weak people out there have tattoos. I'm sure it hurts, but it can't be that bad. <laughs> right? Like, so I'm not gonna get my skull tattooed or like the inside of my elbow or something like that or the back of my knee. I'm sure it's fine. The thing stopping me from getting a tattoo is like, I just don't know. I, I, I don't have an interest in, in like having anything on my body. But also the way I understand it from like Justin, I think was telling me, your first tattoo, people are like very precious about it. They want something that has personal significance to them. And then like every subsequent tattoo is like, yeah, I made an appointment with my tattoo artist and we'll just figure it out when we get there. Like, I think they look cool, but me personally, I just don't, I don't know. I don't have any, I don't have any attachment to it. My parents were untattooed until they were like in their 40s and then they started getting tattooed like crazy. Like my dad has a full sleeve on one of his arms. My mom has like a a full sleeve and then part of her other arm and then like a little bit of her back and stuff like that. I'm, it's true, it's true. They are in the Hells Angels, yes, it's true. You, you got me on that one. <laughs> Why are you not cool like your parents? I don't know, I guess like at some point they were like, hey, we've got some shit that we care about that we'll like put on our body. They just only discovered it once I moved out and went to college. <laughs> no, you will not, it, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody. I think tattoos look cool on other people. It's simply like, for me, you will, one thing I can guarantee you is you will not catch me getting a video game tattoo. It's simply not gonna come to pass. It's not gonna happen unless, no unless. <laughs> Zelda tattoo Marty here, you caught me. I'm not knocking it. I'm saying if you if the, if it means a lot to you, then more power to you. What if it was a Balatro Joker? The only person who I would endorse getting that tattoo is Local Thunk. But again, you could just tell me to fuck off and do whatever you want too. That's the. I'm just a guy. Be sick. Get tattoo of stuff that means something to me. Sure. Get my daughter's face tattooed on my chest, and. Uh, ham sandwich on my back. <laughs> ham sandwiches are goaded? I mean, I'm just saying like, it's crazy. People are gonna hate this take. My parents eat like a wrap for lunch every day. So when they were here, they bought some deli meat. They bought deli turkey. When they left, they said, hey, we got some deli turkey left in the fridge. You should eat it before it goes bad. I said, thank you for the free deli meat. This deli turkey is fucking ass, bro. Why does ham clear every other deli meat? It's like the... The reason the turkey is bad is because it's real. <laughs> like it has like... I can see sinews in it. I can see real muscle. I can see like, see like real cartilage and stuff like that. But ham is just like... It's a beautiful, perfectly uniform, cool salty slice of like emulsified protein and fat like it's it's so good they they broke the mold on ham dude 
What kind of ham do you get? Whichever ham is on sale at the deli counter. Preach, brother. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, maybe I go to the deli counter and, you know, I'm like, oh, I could really go for like a rosemary ham this week. If rosemary ham is three fifty nine dollars per 100 grams and then they got a sale on honey ham and it's like one seventy nine, dollars we're having honey ham sandwiches, okay? I don't think I've purchased deli meat in like six years. It is like uh, horrible for you, I think. Like basically all of it. I think the only stuff that isn't horrible for you is the stuff that's real. So it doesn't taste good. <laughs> As good at least. <laughs> now that you beat climbing game, your stream title looks like you should be reported to Reddit cares. What's my stream title? It ends today. <laughs> Alright, that's a good point. That sounds... Out of context, that sounds bad. Do I have permission to swag out? Absolutely, it's a long weekend. It's a long weekend? Listen, when there's some fucking cooked holiday, okay? When it's family day, you can be like, what? It's a long weekend? This shit is Easter. I'm not letting Gen Z claw back Easter. So their comfort streamer works one extra day, okay? In the secular calendar, I know they're religious holidays, but this is just the way that at least North American society is built, okay? In the secular calendar, number one holiday, Christmas. Untouchable. Number two, in America, Thanksgiving. In Canada, Easter, okay? I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, it's the way that the priorities have shaken out. I'm getting hit with a lot of question marks and I'm getting hit with a lot of plus twos. What's number three in Canada? You might think this is, I, I would love other Canadian takes on this. Thanksgiving is possible, number three, but I actually think it might be Victoria Day. What's, as a Canadian, I get more hyped up for Victoria Day than Canada Day. Cause like Victoria Day, long weekend in May, the first little inklings of beautiful weather. Long weekend in July, you're like, you're not negative about it, but you're like, it's fucking hot. Long weekend in May though, sheesh. Canada Day rings in the summer. If you fucking live in alert Nunavut, Rankin Inlet or something like that. Victoria Day is when you ring in the summer, bro. Third week in May, you ride that shit out until Labor Day. Victoria Day for sure. I'm happy to hear other Canadians agreeing with me. I thought maybe I was coming at this out of pocket. So I, uh, for me personally, Christmas, Easter, Victoria Day, I would throw Thanksgiving after that. Then I would put Canada Day. I don't, I've got nothing against Canada Day. We got like 12 other holidays under this. But that's my, my personal top five. Let's play five cards, okay? That's no problem. Call this a discard in this household. Never half step because I'm not a half stepper. Drink a lot of soda so they call me Mr. Soda. Did you come up with the Mr. Soda joke? I've said it to so many friends. Yes, I did. But it's it's just a it's a common joke. It's just like, you know, you set people up to give an obvious answer and then you just swerve them with the worst possible fake out. Never half step because I'm not a half stepper. Drink a lot of soda, so they call me Mr. Soda. Dr. Pepper was right there. You, when you're running with Shahid and the brother abstract. Yeah, yeah, write that down, write that down. Bust a nut inside your eye to show you where I come from. I know what you're saying. I'm vexed, I'm fuming. I've had it up to here. My days of paying dues are over. Acknowledge me is in there. Fife had some bars, bro. Please move your popcorn. Chat, who's gonna tell him? I'll, I'll move it, I'll move it to the garbage bin so I can take mm, banana instead. Get out of my face, you big disgrace. What do you think he meant when he said waving your feather all over the place? He says banner, not feather. What? I've been operating under that aspersion for forever that's like you, you ever listen i listened to international players anthem by uh 
Outcast featuring UGK a thousand times between 2007 and 2012. Didn't listen to it for a few years. Listened to it again like two weeks ago. Realized he, Pimp C is not saying a thousand a pop, I'm pulling Phillies off the lot. He clearly says a thousand a pop, I'm pulling Bentleys off the lot. Smashed up the gray one, bought me a red. Every time I hit the parking lot, we turn heads. Some wanna choose, but the is too scary. Chose me, you ain't a, you a, oh. <laughs> Why'd you think it was Philly? I don't know, I thought he was, it was like a horse. He's buying a horse. It's slang for horsepower or something like that. Something, you, you hear what you hear and then you try to like make sense of it later, right? The horse lot. I don't know, like, just knowing the context doesn't change what I heard. I thought you were talking about the Paul McCartney line. Ask Paul McCartney, the lawyers couldn't stop me. What is What does Big Boy say after that? Something, something, take his head and tie it to a rock. He says raw sex is bad. Well, he does say up in the guts, raw from the giddy up. You better pick the right one or choose, choose the, pick, pick the kitties up. <laughs> Something like that. Sorry, I had to go back into the mind palace for that one. Bro has two buses. What are you, a village in Switzerland? I like that. Switzerland, I don't know if, if you're Swiss. I'm not sure if this will make you like happy to hear. It might thrill you to hear it. It's, it's genuinely not insulting. It's like the most mysterious country in Europe, I feel. There might be other countries I know less about. But Switzerland is mysterious because every other country around it is like such a known quantity. Like I know a lot about Italy. I know a lot about France. I know a lot about Germany. What the fuck is going on in Switzerland, bro? They're chilling out in the middle, just like hiding in plain sight. The banks, <laughs> the cheese, the chocolate, I know. What do you mean? What's going on there? Well, I mean, like, I know, I know, like, a fucking, like, a ton about the history of Italy and France and Germany. How the fuck did Switzerland come to be, bro? How did that not get taken over and kept during, like, the Roman Empire days or the fucking uh, medieval era because of the mountains? I'm not saying they should have been taken over. I'm just saying, considering that they're surrounded by three European countries that have had like centuries of being enormous powers, it's kind of crazy that, it, like, in a cool way, that Switzerland has its own national identity. Because, like, in North America, no disrespect, that shit would be a state. That would be like Louisiana or something like that. Europe, they're built different over there. <laughs> Why my state every time? Well, I was trying to think of a state that it's a compliment. I was trying to think of a state that is a state but has a unique culture. So my ass is not taking Iowa. I took Louisiana because they got New Orleans. They got like, you know, Creole culture and cuisine and stuff like that. I, I wanted to pick a state that had an identity. What are you saying about Iowa? I'm saying it's probably got a ton of cultural similarities to fucking... Nebraska and Idaho and Colorado and I'm gonna run for president. I have uh, an amazing idea to make everybody's lives better, okay? Everyone's talking about raising the tax rate. Sure, that's all well and good, raising the tax rate on the super rich. I have like another more radical law that I think will help out. If your net worth is over $10 million, it's actually illegal to save money. They don't just take all the money that you have over that, but they force you to go through like a Brewster's Millions type situation where you have to spend it. Like if you're broke, saving money is pious, it's virtuous. If you have a surplus, a surplus of money, Saving money is harming your community, bro. You gotta send that stuff out there. You gotta buy cakes and catered lunches and stuff and support local businesses and, you know, in, invest in projects that improve your local community and stuff like that. You can't just let the, the digital record of your wealth sit in a bank account, bro. 
you got to go out there and eat at a, a local restaurant and you should buy an appetizer, maybe two drinks and a dessert as well. You got to let that stuff circulate, circulate, bro. They would just buy financial products. No, because that would raise their net worth if it went up. Now, if they bought Peloton stock, that might be a way that they could do some accounting fiction and lower their net worth because they'd be able to like carry over like a serious capital loss because the stock is down like 98% in the last five years. But I'm talking more about like they got to buy sandwiches and stuff, okay? Because I get annoyed sometimes because anytime I talk about interfacing with the economy, people are like, why would you do that? That's expensive. And I'm like, I know. I'm not lighting the money on fire. When I pay 20 bucks for linguine pesto, the restaurant that I'm eating at gets 20 bucks. You know, they pay their staff, they pay the electric bill, which goes to the, the somebody working at the electric company then gets paid an hourly wage to like administer the account. And then like, then they go out and they buy ice cream and the ice cream shop gets extra money. And the person that runs the ice cream shop can pay their mortgage and like, you gotta, you gotta, if you cross a certain threshold where you, where you got it, you got to spend it. Why won't you buy a new computer then? You cooked me. I don't have a response to that. Buy a new PC from a local place? Well, listen, I just don't trust them. <laughs> it's just like I'd, I'd trust local restaurants. But like, there's all these places in Vancouver that I am like, I don't know how you still exist. You'll be like driving through Point Grey or something like that and see a, a business that's called like Computer Place. And you're like, they must be like either amazing or preying on vulnerable individuals who are tech illiterate. Maybe it's a, maybe Computer Place goes nuts. I don't know. The, the one <laughs> conglomerate purchase that I will commit to is buying a computer from what I feel like is a reputable outlet instead of just like some dude with a storefront. And maybe that's rude. But it's, it's, it might be ignorant, but that's my current notion. Everything else though, you should be buying that shit from Dave's Home Hardware. You should be going to the local independent pharmacy, not Shoppers Drug Mart. Now, do I live by that creed all the time? Not all the time. Sometimes you're next to a shoppers and you need some shit but if you get the chance to plan around it then yes i like to go to the local store what if the local pharmacy refuses to stock your medication listen i ain't know about all that <laughs> stop trying to trap me okay i'm a good guy i'm a good guy chats per minute has gone down you got everybody thinking about local businesses we're in many ways i would say we're like the thinking person stream some of that thinking is like almost mental gymnastics, trying to figure out like, wait, I know what he said is wrong, but like, why is it wrong? And that's a, that's a type of thinking as well. LTT is in Surrey, you should collab with them. Sorry, I only go to local businesses. As a Vancouverite, I don't wanna contribute to the destruction of my local community by going out of town for a service like that. So I will be buying my PC from Computer Place. <laughs> It's run by one 81-year-old man who predominantly makes his living selling bootleg copies of Windows 10 for $30. Who still does things the old-fashioned way, exactly. What's the point of having the 4X if you never do it? Listen, buddy. How you know that a lad who looks like me is starting to get a little heated? Listen, buddy, you and what army? <laughs> I'm cooked. Librarian is bringing up references to tweets that I stole. <laughs> Used to just slip it through into the discourse and then everyone would laugh and in my head I would be like, they don't know that I stole the punchline from Twitter. Nowadays you're keeping me honest. Now I gotta be like, it was a reference. Just cause I didn't cite it, that doesn't mean it's not referential. It's open source humor. <laughs> oh man. How are you holding up with this P. Diddy news? It was shaking me to my core without a doubt. I don't think there's anything, any doubt about that. The one thing I do want to say, and maybe I shouldn't even venture into this domain, everybody keeps repost, reposting for clouts. This movie looks a lot different now, and it's Get Him to the Greek, starring Russell Brand, P. Diddy, and Jonah Hill. 
And listen, I'm not saying you got to hand it to him. But we got to chill out on the Russell Brand P. Diddy Association for Jonah Hill. Okay? I'm not suggesting that when Jonah Hill got spotlighted for maybe drawing unfair boundaries, as the public saw it at least with his girlfriend, I'm not saying he was the right guy, like doing the right thing in that situation, but we got P. Diddy who's going to Supermax, bro. He's going to be like the Unabomber cellmate. And then Russell Brand, I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but is, has he suggested yet that the Baltimore bridge collapse was like a something to distract us from the real news yet? Because it seems like it's kind of, that's the vibe I'm getting off of him. And then Jonah Hill's just in the middle making the Jonah Hill face like. Jonah Hill might have been a little bit of a jerk, but like, I mean, we're lumping him in with some, some bad dudes. <laughs> you only have to sell eight jokers to beat the 4X. I'm going to die on this hill. Brother, why are we selling jokers in this household? when you can just do this. I, I just gotta tell you to simmer a little bit. You and what army? Who died and made you the president of Balatro? Sorry, I'm busting out all the, all the fighting words. Back it up, pal. That's a big one. Back it up, pal. You know your shit's about to go down if you hear that. I know you are, but what am I? I'm rubber, but you're glue. These are playground insults that go hard. Lo-fi beats to get your shit rocked too. I see what you're saying. You think Balatro is the best game with the worst type A chatters? It's honestly not even close. Factorio is the best game with the worst type A chatters. You know what it is, is like, not to be rude to Factorio, I literally just said it's a great game. But like the only people who will watch a hundred hours of Factorio when you're not very good at it, like they're gonna have opinions. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Nobody that's like, I'm just gonna put on some shit on the second monitor is like, oh good, new Factorio episode, right? That's like, they're gonna put on some, you know, mini golf or something. I'm going to endless this one just because it's the last stream of the week. It's true, it's true. Again, I will accept no sass. It's Easter, bro. Easter's a legitimate holiday. Are you back Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. I mean, you can be mad about that if you want. I'm at the mercy of my daughter's daycare. <laughs> if they... Easter Monday is a legitimate holiday. If the daycare's taking Monday off, I'm taking Monday off too. Dude's taking Friday and Monday for a single holiday. I'm not Jesus Christ. I didn't I didn't mark the calendar with it. The calendar came pre-marked, bro. It seemed to have me confused. I don't know shit about Easter. I'm so cooked. I thought Pancake Tuesday was a religious holiday. Turns out there's just some shit that the church next to my high school did to try to recruit. It should be <laughs> That's not even a joke. That that part is true. Were the pancakes good? I mean, I went once and I like got some pancakes, but like, I don't like pancakes that much and the vibes were kind of off, so I, I never went back. No disrespect. Are you pancakes, waffles, or French toast? Well, listen, I'm familiar with the Twitter discussions regarding this specific subject. Um, I think that's a false dilemma and he will not divide us. That being said, at the end of the day, if you're gonna force me to choose, I'm a waffle guy. I would go waffles, pancakes, French toast. I'm just not a French toast Andy. Pancakes, I like them okay. But they're, I mean, like a waffle, you can elevate. A pancake is kind of like, it's always basically the same. You can add fruit to it, but that's about it. But there's nothing necessarily wrong with consistency. It's just, uh, I mean, I, I gotta go waffles above all. This is the most offensive take. POV, you are from Nebraska. What the fuck you mean pancakes ain't number one? Fuck you. <laughs> you, you know what? Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. If they're from Nebraska, why are they British? They had a head injury as a child that caused them to speak in a British accent. 
So you're being very insensitive to this person, honestly. What's for lunch? Now that, that is a good question. That's a good question I don't know the answer to. I think we have one slice of leftover pepperoni pizza. One slice though is not, I mean, as you know, I'm a different kind of beast. That's not really enough for the kind of guy that I am. So I gotta supplement it with something. Maybe I'll add a bagel on top as well. She gets some Indian food. Can I, here's the best way that I can illustrate to you how actually sick I was like two weeks ago, okay? Two Tuesdays ago, when my parents were here, we bought Indian food for dinner. Four adults got four curries. Inevitably, that leads to a leftover type situation, which is great. Had lots of leftovers. I was so sick, I let him go bad. It might be the first time in my entire life I have ever let delicious Indian food leftovers go bad, but my appetite was so fucked, I just like, I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I ate some leftover naan that was pretty good, but like, that's the, the most apt way that I can illustrate that we were fucking, <laughs> we were in the shit two weeks ago. I'm on my ninth day of the flu. It's not messing around this year. Guy who didn't get his flu shot. Don't get it twisted. Get your flu shot, everybody. You have to get your flu shot. Protect yourself and the community around you. Me, mm, I'm a different kind of beast. I already had it. I got the antibodies. <laughs> okay, Aaron Rodgers. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. If anything, I want them to make the vaccine so convenient that I don't have to go out of my way to get them. If they would fucking do DoorDash vaccines, I'd be hooked up, man. But they always want, me, oh, this fucking 9.45 p.m. on Friday work for your schedule? It doesn't. And then they're always like hitting me with the male gaze when I get in there. They're like, take your shirt off. And I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, roll up your sleeve. And I'm like, all right, daddy. She gives off a weird vibe, bro. <laughs> We're back on the DoorDash. I, you already know what I'm gonna say. I will always, I will always stand on business for DoorDash discourse. You can't just walk into a CVS and get one. It's way harder here. We don't have CVS. You gotta walk into a Shoppers Drug Mart. It's a totally different sort of situation. Yo, and I didn't know you took money from the U.S. Marines. I didn't know you were tight with them like that. Let's. I don't have control over all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Heard they got your man. Heard they got your man on warmongering crimes. The streamer you was watching. Heard your tier two sub to him. This is it, fellas. Hold. Just hold. Don't know, Wald, hug, whatever. Chibli, I'm sorry, what did you say? What did you say, Chibli? Also, what the fuck would you play on this hand, bro? <laughs> One glass queen? No, I think, I think four queens is the way. I think you're right. That was 83 million points, it's still pretty good. That's 900,000 points. That's fucking ass. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> no. Nobody is saying that. How many queens we got left in this bitch? Three. That's not enough to make four of a kind last time I checked. Well, alright. You know what? Lucky King hitting two steel cards. Well, well, uh, <laughs> is there anything more demoralizing than needing 450 million points and your hand earns 120,000? Still a great run, though. We made, we made some great progress today. Balacho. All right, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. I will be back on Tuesday 
enjoy your long weekend if your country respects you as people and not just as uh, labor. I will see you then. Later. Gotta catch a hunker, a grouper, or a tuna. Gotta catch a hunker, a haddock, or a cod. Gotta catch a hunker, albacore. What the hell, man? How did I get nothing from the sea? Now we gotta switch it up slightly. Don't remember how does the tune go during this part? <laughs> oh, Jesus.